now from the makers of Cold Water Omo. Well, it's a bit pinned down, I'm afraid, Mrs. Peel. Yes, Mr. Puffin, but let's counterattack. Set these balloons you were selling free and burst a few others. As the balloons floated up from the old street vendor's stall, Blackie, the assassin, worked his way to the back of the stall. The people in the street laughed at the balloons bursting. Mrs. Peel didn't laugh. She waited for Blackie and jumped in. The gun dropped to the pavement. Oh, Puffin grabbed it. Mrs. Peel was thrown. Blackie staggered back, picked up the sharp scissors Puffin had been using to cut the string of his balloons and plunged forward to stab Mrs. Peel when... Puffin stood amongst the wreckage of his stall, the revolver in his hand. Honey, I'm so old and yet... That's the first time I've ever killed... The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 5 of this story, in which John Steed and Mother remain baffled by the whole affair, and Emma Peel is taken away for... A Case of Interrogation. Two young agents, Casper and Minnow, had disappeared mysteriously, and subsequently their contact men had been killed. It was clear that there had been a serious security leak. Wilson and Izzy Pound, Casper's two contact men, had met untimely deaths. And later, faced with these facts, Casper himself had been shot. Charles Minnow's first contact, Fillington, had also died. And Mrs. Peel had forced Mother to tell her the name of the second contact, who was surely in grave danger. The second contact had turned out to be old Herbert Puffin. And this time, Mrs. Peel had been lucky. In the struggle in Bridgewell Street, she'd narrowly escaped death. The assassin, Blackie, had been killed. Mrs. Peel was grateful and frustrated. A dead man is a dead end, Steve. Yes, see what you mean. He can't lead us to whoever he was working for. That's right. Still, it has proved quite a few things. That Minnow must have talked. Yes. Well, what's happened to old Puffin? Well, the balloon went up in every sense. He folded his stall up and disappeared in double-quick time. I don't think he'll be around for some time. Oh, I've no doubt he'll make the contact when things have cooled off. Meanwhile... Meanwhile, a full report to Mother. Any idea who the would-be assassin is? Mm Mm-mm. New to me. The boys at headquarters will run a complete check on the body. They may come up with something. I wonder what our chances are of picking up Minnow. Slight. I'm not so sure. After Casper's two contacts have been killed, he turned up as though nothing had happened. Minnow could do the same. Well, not once they realize we've killed that man. Could be that he arranged all the other deaths. If we've knocked him out, then they may silence Minnow once and for all. He has no more contact. Mm, that could be. Oh, well, let's think of the inner man and not the link man. Lunch, Mrs. Peel? Mm. That afternoon, in Mother's headquarters, Steed and Mother sat over coffee, staring at the forensic reports and photographs. Well, this is a pretty kettle of fish. Report is clear enough. Accurate description of the man, fingerprints, photographs. We don't know him. No one does. No police record, nothing. Even I don't know him. And I pride myself on knowing everyone. Yes, he's a new fellow, all right. The whole thing is new. The entire situation. There must be a new organization working. This is dangerous. And baffling. We haven't got a clue on him. Anonymous. Like that chap in the photograph. What the devil? Someone wants to join us. I'm not expecting anyone. The concealed door at the top of the gallery started to swing inwards. Someone outside had known the correct number to dial in order to enter Mother's headquarters. Not many people had that privilege. Minnow's the last link. If only we could find Minnow. Someone looking for me? Minnow! 
Well, I was just on my way home. But I thought I'd better pop in just in case something urgent had cropped up. I don't believe that. Well, then, what's been happening in the jolly old world of intrigue, eh? Mother looked at Steed. Steed looked at Mother. And they both looked towards the liquor cabinet. Uh, uh, have a drink, Meadow. Jolly decent of your mother. A large one, Mother. A very large one, Steed. Uh, <clears throat> um, a fine weather for this time of the year, eh? Well, a little cold, sir. <laughs> your drinks. Thank you, Steve. And I give you a toast. To absent friends. Will you drink to that, Minnow? Yes, sir, of course. Cheers. Absent friends like this man. Mother shot a photograph of Blackie across the table at Minnow. Who? Blackie? You know him? Yes, of course I do. It's Sergeant Blackie. He works at... <laughs> oh, oh, no. No, no, no. I'm not falling for that one. They warned me you might try to trip me up. A little How later. trip you up? Faking Blackie's death like that. That is no fake, Minnow. Oh, come. Now. That is no fake, Minnow. That man, Blackie, or whatever his name is, was shot and killed while attempting to murder Mr. Puffin. Puffin? <laughs> but that's ridiculous. How could anyone possibly know about Puffin? That is what we want you to tell us. Is he... Is he really dead? Really? We could run you down to the morgue to see for yourself. But that would be a waste of time. And we don't have time to waste, Minnow. No time at all. Now talk. Well, I, well, I, don't, I don't know. Well, I ought to contact Mannering first. Mannering? Colonel Mannering. Who's he? Oh, oh, now, come on, Mother. Surely you must know. I do not know, a Colonel Mannering. You will please explain what you're talking about. If you don't mind, I... I think I'd like to sit down. You'd better sit down and start from the very beginning, Minnow. We want to know everything. Mrs. Peel was taking a quiet rest, her feet up and a harmless novel on her lap, when the doorbell rang. Oh, coming! Yes? Mrs. Peel, Mrs. Emma Peel. Yes. Colonel Maring, interdepartmental security, head of Oriental military studies. My identity cards. Maring handed over an elaborate wallet. You'd better come in. Thank you. I'd um, be obliged if you would give the identification papers more than just a cursory glance, Mrs. Peel. I want to be sure that you know exactly who I am and what I represent. Oh, of course. Mrs. Peel studied the papers. Uh, perhaps you would be good enough to let me see your own identification papers. Of course. Mrs. Peel opened a drawer in the desk, took out a wallet, and handed it to Mannery. Thank you. You're awfully cautious. I have to be. You watch others, Mrs. Peel. We watch you. Big brother. Hmm? Uh, we would like to think our interest was more um, paternal. Would you like a drink? No, no, thank you. Uh, drinking whilst on duty is something we discourage amongst our operatives. Too bad. I'm not on duty at the moment. Do I take it that you are, Colonel Mannering? I'll get right to the point, Mrs. Peel. I have orders here to escort you to Centre 53, where you will attend the T.O.H.E. Refresher Course A7. Uh, perhaps you would like to examine these orders? I'll take your word for it. Oh, please, I'd rather you didn't. Here. Mrs. Peel took the documents and scanned them. You'll see the course is covered under Secret Security, Sealed Instructions Number 47, subsection QR... Nine, four, three, two. Hmm. It says the course is to start immediately. As of this moment, yes. But I've been working full out on an assignment for the past 24 hours without a break. And you are tired? Very. Precisely why the course starts immediately, Mrs. Peel. When you are weary, when your endurance can be taxed to the limits. But the assignment I'm on hasn't finished yet. It has, as far as you are concerned. Naturally, you have a right to complain to a higher authority. Perhaps you might like to pick up that telephone and call Mother... I might just do that. You have already committed a cardinal error, admitting to me that Mother even exists. That will cost you ten demerit points. A bad start. Mannering picked up the phone and placed it in Mrs. Peel's hand. Well, go ahead. Make the call. Although I can assure you it won't do you any good. After all, he selected you for the course. Very well, Colonel Mannering. But what is the T.O.H.E. course, anyway? A test of human endurance.
In Mother's headquarters, Minnow had been answering questions yet again. Poor Minnow didn't know which side he was on by the time he'd finished. The T-O-H-E course. Test of human endurance. That's right. That's what he said. The T-O-H-E. Refresher course, A7. Never heard of it. Oh, well, only one way to find out. Hello, Mother speaking. Put me through to security internal. Uh, security internal? What do you know about T-O-H-E refresher course A7? Yes, A7. Well, get hold of someone who does know and ring me back. Minnow, you say you were taken to Centre 53? Yes, that's right. Well, where is it? In the country, a large house. Yes, but where? Well, I don't know. It was part of the security arrangements that I shouldn't know. I was taken there in a closed van. A small, black, closed van. A small, black, closed van was moving away from the pavement outside Mrs. Peel's apartment. In the front seat, next to the driver, smiling grimly, was Colonel Mannering. Inside, clutching a small suitcase, was Mrs. Peel. You're still lagging way behind, Steed. Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.